Joining me live is the Director of Freshwater Strategy, Dr Michael Turner, to talk about this. Uh, you did a little bit of work for Liz Truss in the mm. lead-up uh, to her becoming Prime Minister. It is extraordinary that six weeks in, she could have, you know, such little confidence in her, just not on the public, that the Tory members mm. that voted for her, Mike. How did it happen? Yeah, it's, um, it's a horror show. Um, ultimately... Uh, we have gone from a little bump in the polls uh, when she was elected, little bump there, uh, actually freshwater strategists and polling uh, just before and as the budget was coming out and it showed a, a small seven point gap between kind of Labour and the Conservatives, you know, still just shy of a majority for Labour, but certainly an opportunity there. And the fallout post this mini budget, which wasn't so mini, um, has been unreal. And since then, it, we've been in a downward spiral the Chancellor has lost his job to, in order to try and save the Prime Ministers. And now we see the Prime Minister desperately trying to save her own. Yeah, she certainly does seem like she's trying to do that. Uh, it seems like, you know, we've seen this movie before mm. uh, when we haven't had any, any Cabinet Ministers resigned thus far, but once you start to see that, you know it's kind of over. We saw that with Boris Johnson. I know we've seen that in the various uh, leadership challenges here in Australia as well. I mean, perhaps it's a cheeky comparison, but I did see someone this morning saying that Liz Truss is about as unpopular as Vladimir Putin in the UK now. Yeah, well, um, possibly not quite that low, I'd say, but <laughs> yeah. it, she is very unpopular at the moment. They didn't been... go head to head in this poll, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I think um, it, it, uh, there's a recent YouGov poll that just came out that said that actually Liz Truss is uh, the most uh, unpopular Prime Minister on record at the moment, mm. um, you know, which is obviously a remarkable statistic. You know, it's, um, it's a very dangerous time right now for um, her team and her mm. in the sense that, you know, she's really put forward an agenda which she promised during her campaign uh, and she put it forward all in one go instead of kind of drip feeding some of those communications about what she was going to be doing in, uh, during the mini budget. And, you know, though budgets are difficult, you know, particularly at times where there's rising cost of living, uh, you know, most people don't really understand that, you know, a budget is as consequential as one we've just seen in the UK. And, you know, it's cost the Chancellor his job. And, you know, now we can see just the impact it's had on public opinion in the UK. We've got a budget coming up in Australia, uh -huh. uh, you know, and mm -hmm. no doubt the, the, the Prime Minister and Jim Chalmers will be looking uh, what's going on in the UK and taking heed of that but you know these things are really consequential to people's lives and you can see that result in the in the public opinion now. Yeah it just seems like the government or perhaps is it her or is it the product of a a 10-year-old, 12-year-old conservative government after COVID, their cost of living crisis, mm. they seem like they're completely rudderless, like they do not know mm. what to do because the mini budget was at odds with conservative values, uh, really, and at odds with what the central bank there in the UK was trying to do. She went from the darling of the, the Tory party, this, mm -hmm. you know, um, the pedigree uh, being conservative to her core, mm. then her first actions were anything but that. So, you know, not being uh, true to her values or the values of her government. Is that fair? Yeah, look, I, I think it is fair. I think, but I think there's, there's lots of good um, conservative policies mm. in there. I just think it was too hard, too fast, and it, these are delicate things to communicate to people. Remember, the fallout came not necessarily because the public thought that tax cuts were bad, per se, mm. but because the key stakeholders in society, financial institutions, banks, reacted very badly to it. They weren't informed. And, and actually, being Prime Minister is as much about communications as it is about the public policy, and you need to bring people with you. Yeah. And I think the mistake here was that it caught people off guard and there wasn't, there didn't seem to be a, a solid plan mm. about how this was going to be paid for. And it, 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 politics is a brutal world and we can see now Quasi's lost his job, in comes Jeremy Hunt, and all of those policies have been reversed now. There's even talk about the uh, energy subsidy yeah. uh, being reduced just down to six months now. Wow. In, so, and that was the big head, 100 billion pounds policy and that's going to be chopped right back. Yeah, extraordinary that when it was announced by Kwasi, mm. um, it was 
actually more than the whole furlough scheme uh, during COVID. So that's just, you know, gives the idea of the enormity of it all. But there is a cost of living crisis in the UK. Energy bills are through the roof. They're unaffordable for most average families. Mm. Putting fuel in your car uh, is almost unaffordable. So, so what happens uh, now with that? Because there hasn't really been this net zero debate in the UK, has there, like there has been here. Does that re-erupt, do you think? Do you think voters are, are looking a little bit more closely at the, the renewable revolution, if you like? Mm, yeah, and don't forget it's coming here as well at some point. So, yeah, mm. the price rises will be coming to Australia. Mm. I do think, I mean, we've recently conducted some polling in the UK and also in Australia um, around what people are willing to pay yep. in order for the UK to uh, achieve net zero. And uh, in the UK, it's a little bit higher than over here. Um, it's about £8.50 a week, which is about £450 a year, approximately. Um, I think that it's interesting to see that really that tails off very, very quickly. If it goes yeah. up above and beyond that, then, you know, they're not really not willing to be able to pay for it at all. And again, as the cost of living increases, it might find, might find that that amount is squeezed even further. So, yes, I think there is... Um, reality might be biting for a lot of households now about what the potential impact is going to be of energy price rises. And I think it's very important. It's extremely difficult if you have to... If you're in government right now and you're making decisions on this, you know, I don't envy you. It's very difficult. Yeah, it certainly is. OK, final question. Boris Johnson, a return. Yeah, we talked about this, didn't we? Think? Yeah, and, and um, yeah, I, I would not rule it out. That sounds bizarre if we were talking about this eight weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, you did suggest that he might have a, a tilt of coming back at this. Uh, there is some chatter among Conservative Party circles to let Liz Truss continue for another year or so and potentially bring Boris back before the election. election. Yes. But, well, he's uh, proven in the election, isn't he? Yeah, well, he certainly is someone that can communicate well. And, yeah, we'll see whether or not that comes true. But, yeah, it's a small percentage, but it's not uh, zero. I'll tell you what, uh, Lord Edward Lister, when I spoke to him in the UK, he said never say never either. So, look, he's a big Boris Johnson fan, but we'll see that where that ends up. Mike, always great to talk to you. Likewise. See you soon.